Hi, my name is Jess and I work at the Columbus Metropolitan Library. Today we'll be reading Seven and a Half Tons of Steel by Janet Nolan and illustrated by Thomas Gonzalez. Seven and a Half Tons of Steel. There is a ship, a Navy ship. It is called the USS New York. It is big, like other Navy ships, and it sails like other Navy ships. But there is something different, something special about the USS New York. On September 11th, 2001, clouds of smoke billowed into the clear blue sky. The World Trade Center towers came down. Almost 3,000 people lost their lives. In the days after the towers collapsed, people brought flowers and photographs, stuffed animals and pictures drawn with crayon. They lit candles and left handwritten notes to decorate a place now called Ground Zero. For weeks and months afterward, people cleared away metal and stone from Ground Zero. One truck carried a beam made of steel from New York to a foundry in Louisiana. Workers heated the beam to a high, high temperature. Steel melted into liquid, molten metal. Bright orange and fiery red was poured into a mold. It took four days to cool. Seven and a half tons of steel, which had once been a beam in the World Trade Center, was now the bow of a Navy ship. Chippers and grinders, painters and polishers worked on it for months. Once a beam, but now a bow, it was taken to a shipyard in the city of New Orleans. Shipbuilders, engineers, electricians, mechanics, welders and carpenters, Painters and plumbers all worked together to build the USS New York. And then it was time to install the bow. Shipbuilders stopped their work and came to watch. Draped in an American flag, seven and a half tons of steel were lifted by a crane and welded into place on the USS New York. Out in the ocean, a storm started to swirl. Wind twisted, water churned. Hurricane Katrina slammed into New Orleans. Levees broke, homes flooded, and businesses were swept away. Many shipbuilders lost their homes and they could not work on the USS New York until Camp Katrina was built. Now the workers had a place to live and they could continue building the ship. Finally, the USS New York was finished, but the mighty ship still sat on dry land, inch by inch, using skids, grease, and hydraulic lifts, the ship was put into the water. It was the biggest moving object on the earth that day. The ship sailed down the Mississippi, into the Gulf of Mexico, and out into the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean. The USS New York was going home. The USS New York sailed past the Statue of Liberty and came to a stop across from Ground Zero, the site where the World Trade Center towers once stood. There was silence on the water, there was silence on the land. The silence was broken by a 21-gun salute. When the ceremony ended, the warship set out to do its job at sea. On September 11, 2011, the 10th anniversary of the collapse of the World Trade Center towers, the USS New York returned home. The men and women of the United States military services lined the rails of the ship. People came from all over the country and around the world to see the ship that bore the crest never forget. The USS New York is part of our American history. Wherever it sails the high seas, its bow cuts the water. Seven and a half tons of steel lead the way.